Good morning, Cyber Traders. How's everybody doing on this lovely Thursday? Good to see you all. All right, good, good. Beautiful. Good to see you, Donna, Jeff, Nancy, everybody. Well, what a great shakeup yesterday in the market, huh? On the Dow Jones. Holy cow, dropping 600 points. Incredible. Don't we like, listen, October. October crashes, I tell you, listen, I'm telling you, I'm glad that I got out, um, I'm glad I got out of this, uh, a lot of some of my swing trades, I, the only, only stock that I'm holding right now is I got that CSQ that kind of take a little bit of a, a hit, but I'm still doing great on the, on the 8%, but not really, I'm, I'm kind of, kind of flat, uh, on the, the value of the stock, but I'm doing great on the paying the interest that it's paying, so, that's the beauty about it. But other than that, I'm just sitting back and watching. But this is what we call a day trader's dream. I mean, this is what you're looking for. This is what you train for. I mean, I, I was just talking to Josh earlier this morning. We were going over some of the watch lists and stuff like that. What happened yesterday. And no matter what you touched, they were all good shorts. Okay? Everything was a great short. And... Uh, and and because what was the news? It were, everybody's worried about corporate earnings, you know, regarding about going to the, you know the new year, and because interest rates are going up. And you know, this is what you learn being a trader, being here every day. So when it comes to trading, you just know that, you know, they raise interest rates. Well, that interest rates, you know, were not factored into some uh, future earnings. Of certain people, and that's what they were a little bit concerned. But you could see. I mean, we're talking about Twitter right now. Look at Twitter. Twitter came out with uh, came out with really good earnings, and it popped. It went from twenty eight. Boom, the 3150, but now it dropped about about a buck already in pre-market in the past hour. I'm just looking at the the matrix over here on the right hand side. There's a lot, a lot of orders everywhere. I saw a big order out there for 25,000. So um definitely a lot going on. There, there he is right there. You see him? 29,000 for thirty dollars and forty-four cents. Looks like he's sitting right there pushing it down. No real, I don't see any thirty thousand share buyer. I see that seller. But 4.6 million shares, so that's pretty much normal. Anyway, let's talk about what happened yesterday because there were a couple of good stocks that I'm going to go through the watch list. Uh, also, uh, before I move on, uh, move ahead, AMD. You know, I said this earlier this morning, uh, but, you know, AMD didn't have a good, er good earnings last night, and uh, that just kind of fueled the fire. But I kind of mentioned earlier, you know, it's a shame. It, it, took, it took about, I don't know, three, four months Five months, four months for AMD to make that big, big run up uh, from 18 to about 35, and uh, it lost it all in less than a month. So listen, you hear me saying it all all the time. Whatever goes up comes down twice as fast, and this way it came down three times faster. But um, but once again, it's it's all about taking a profit. That's where you have to look at it. All right, a couple other things that we're going to look at regarding, we're going to keep, this is, obviously these two stocks are on the watch list, all right? And then the LRN, just bring that one up. That was probably the best mover yesterday. A lot of you guys did great on that. You know, the only thing, the only thing is that if you did miss it early in the morning, you could have jumped in around 11 and went from 21 to 24. The only thing I had, a, uh, it was a great long. It was nice. Um, had beautiful Fausto flags. You could see it at 12 o'clock. You see it right here and everything. But, uh, and remember, we, we really, we covered this a lot, uh, specifically on the on-site class that we did. And I was telling everyone, and, and, and when, you know, listen, a lot of you guys, I know you love the on-site, and you all know that you learned so much to come to the on-site. And by the way, the next one is going to be in September. We only do it once a year. But you know, but you, you got to be ready for it. And the reason for is that I it's it's when you're a new trader, you can explain so much. You know, when you're doing a webinar, right? But when I take you by the hand and I bring you up to the screen and you start looking at, it, I start drawing on my on my whiteboard and stuff like that. And when, you know, then it really really kicks in. And I was talking about specifically about double uh, about breaking lower lows, and we kept preaching it, we kept talking about it. And some people said, well, when you know when is enough enough to take a profit? And we talked about the higher highs. Well, this one was a clear example of what, you know, where you could have rode this thing up all the way from 20, 20 to 24. And then, you know, not knowing that, how do we know it was going to stop at 24? We could have been happy at 22. But how do you kind of run the wave and just keep running with it until you stop? Well, that's what we really covered. So anyway, I know we covered a lot of that. Uh, a couple other things that did pretty well, obviously, on the shorts yesterday, Micron just got decimated too. Man, that thing is getting killed. Look at that thing. 
Look at July. I think it was up in the 60s, down to 35. Micron was a hell of a runner, huh? Micron was such a fun stock. Well, it's not looking too well right now. <laughs> Micron. I know it's going to probably get close to his support levels. Hertz getting destroyed. That was another fun stock. You know, it's pretty funny. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about these car stocks, these rental cars. Could, 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 could you guys tell me, honestly, the last time you, when you went on, went on, a, on a, a, a trip or a business trip, whatever it is, and rented a car versus just taking Uber, right? I mean, it was, it was like, that was like the, when you book your car, I mean, you book your plane ticket and you always said, well, I need a car. I need a car, right? And because you know, taxis were like ridiculous and you know, they were expensive and, you know, and then you're starting to realize, you know, I'll just do Uber and, um, and it's just amazing that a lot of these car stocks are getting crushed. So everybody's wondering why they're not doing that well. Well, and you know, you know what's also funny? Kind of mentioned. Um, I was just in Florida, and um, and I rented a car, and then I canceled it. I'm like, what the hell am I doing? It, it was funny because I I found the car. It was cheap. I got it was it was a Mustang convertible. I could have got it. It was like uh, I got it for like thirty dollars, and I only need it for like three days, you know, when I was down there in Florida for the, uh, when I was at, d d doing an event at trade station. And then I was thinking for myself, I got the bill I, at, at the all said and done, it came out to like $250. I'm like, how did I go from like $30, you know, which have been like $90 for the three days to, to 250. Well, you got the, you got the, you got tax, state tax, um, airport tax, airport fee, we all said it done. The thing ended up being like $65. I'm like, I'm not interested. You know what? I'll just do Uber. It's cheaper. It's safer. You know what I mean? I got to park the car. Forget it. So anyway, not, not, to, not, to, not to spend too much time on it, but when people start worrying about like, I th you know, you thought these were at one point were blue chip stocks. Well, they're not too blue chip anymore. Car, same thing. Avis, you know, look at that. This was like a blue chip stock, everyone thought. Everyone was like, you know, what's blue chip mean? You know, blue chip, they're like, you know, there's blue chip and a speculative. People thought that New York stocks were all blue chip. And sure enough, you know what? They're not, the, they don't look too blue chip anymore, <laughs> right? So uh, obviously they're all getting killed. A lot of things got killed yesterday. Anyway, being down 600 points. But anyway, the couple of things are obviously pu pushing things back up. So let's go check out some of the winners right now. You want to focus on, okay, obviously we got the Twitter on our, wa our watch list. Oops, typed in the wrong window, TWTR. So Twitter, you know, it's got that little support level. Looks like that big guy got hit on the offer. Listen, you guys know we traded Twitter many times. And if you were a good student and you did what you were taught and you do your coaching like we do here at Cyber Train University and we walk you through with things, the first thing we always ask you, where are you? You, what, where are your journals, okay? And if you did them right and you were trained what we teach in class, because that's what we're doing right now, obviously, um, I also forgot to mention, today's the, the start of phase two lessons um, of, of the classes. So we spent a lot of time talking about journals. Go back and look at your Twitter trades, okay? And if you followed the way you were taught how to journal your stocks, uh, and how to take good notes, if it's tradable or not, then you'll know how to trade Twitter. But I can tell you right off the bat, Twitter is a little bit of a nasty stock. It could be. You know, it's a lot of fun. It's good in the, in the beginning uh, when, in, when the market opens up, but it's got some nasty, nasty shakes. So be very careful. GLUU is another one I found in the big watch list. Um, here's a stock up uh, about 573,000 shares at 14%. She looked pretty good at 8 o'clock this morning, but she's not looking too good right now. She's really backing off. So I, I don't know. I'm probably going to scratch that one off my list. I got the AMD on the watch list. You know, that one, it's probably going to be testing some nice support levels, which it looks like it's doing right here. A lot of good iceberg orders. 10 million shares trade already is that incredible and by the way what the hell has happened with Budweiser I guess nobody's drinking beer anymore oh my god this thing just got decimated I was just looking at the long-term chart you know I don't know you know it's funny I, you know all smoking pot now <laughs> is that what it is <laughs> well that's a that's a probably where they're heading up going huh uh, where are we down to $74 Budweiser once again, another blue chip stock. You know, it's funny. I was talking to Ray, um, and we're talking about Canada. We're talking about uh, the the uh, socialism medicine, 
and how everyone thinks that, you know, maybe U.S. should have social medicine. And I'm like, well, how are you supposed to pay for it? Right. He goes, he go, and uh, he goes, how are, you said, how are you supposed to pay for it? He goes, oh, you just tax everybody. He said, and, and not a lot of people have an issue. And, and no wonder, I, I guess, you know what? If they want to try to find the money, if they did what they did in Canada, I guess a case of beer, what's a case of beer cost over here? About $27, $30 for a really good case of beer. That means that you buy a case of beer in Canada, it's like $48, $50 a case. So... I mean, if they're going to go that route, they'll just tax beer and they'll double double the case. So if you're cool with that, you know, and paying fifty dollars a case a uh, beer, well then there you go. There's there goes Bud taking a big crash. <laughs> tax is always the answer for some. I know James. Everything's that every that that's 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 the answer. But anyway, we're not trying to get uh, political or anything like that. But I'm just trying to tell you. I mean, uh, you know, I was trying to figure out how do you pay for, how do you pay for this medicine. I says, oh, you just tax it. So, and it's funny because I was just in Canada, and let me tell you, Canadians got the best beer. They really, really, really got the best beer. They they put a little bit more alcohol in it, so it tastes a little bit better. But you know, they got great beer up there. But to pay fifty dollars a case, I mean, like when I go up there and I look at I look at some of the when I come back and I look at the uh, when I get my bill and I uh, like my receipt, like when I go to a restaurant. I mean, there's like four different taxes on there. So, you know, it's got to be, you know, once again, you want something, you got to get, you got to get it from somewhere. So anyway, Bud not doing too well. I don't know if that has something to do with it or whatever, but stock is getting crushed. You pay taxes or you buy insurance. Either way you pay. That's right. That, there you go, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So Bud's taking a big hit. We're going to keep an eye on that one. ACB. We did pretty well with that stock uh, pretty recently, but it came, just took a big tank. I thought it was going to pop again this morning, but it doesn't look like it's going anywhere. I'm going to scratch that off. Uh, what else did we have? I think that was about it. I didn't really see anything that was really great. You know, that was really out there. There was this one other stock, the AMRH, that got destroyed. It went from a buck ten down to forty cents. It backed up a little bit, so we could probably keep on the AMRH also. You know, and I'm going to say this all the time. I'm not a big fan trading stocks under a dollar because when it comes to that, um, you're dealing with tenths of a penny. So it gets very difficult. The spreads in, are, are, are very, very difficult to monitor. So you got to be really careful with that. Uh, Ted says, quit smoking when cigarettes got to $12 a carton. You know what? I remember my parents. Um, I mean, you know what? In Florida, they don't tax it. So it was funny. I, I, I my mom, uh, uh, you know, uh, always uh, uh, was a big smoke at one point. And when I went down to Florida, he bought like a, a carton of cigarettes for like I don't know twenty seven dollars. But you come here to New York, it's like fifty dollars. So yeah, she quit pretty quickly too. Also. So I guess that's what stops it. Uh, but earnings and what's morning prior to earnings at buck twenty, Neil. Yeah, I mean, listen, Bud's not really doing too well. But I thought Bud got bought out, or they, or they bailed out. I thought they got bought out by that that Canadian uh, brewer. So I thought it was. Uh, Lita says I paid a hundred dollars Canadian for sixty five dollars in U S dollars. Yeah, I mean, listen. I, I know Lita. And Lita's been here, what, five times to the on-site? Isn't things so much cheaper, though, here, Lita? I know a lot of people come here and they buy so much stuff when they come to the U.S. But, um, all right, so listen, we got our watch list. Listen, it's not the biggest list. And and honestly, nothing's really attractive as much as we always find. We don't, we, it looks like we don't have a lot of those, you know, those really nice high flyers or those short squeezes so far. The market took a big hit. We're probably going to get a little bit of a rebound. Um, my big thing is just sit in cash, get in class today, learn, and let's just sit back and watch what's going on. Remember, you're less than two weeks away from one of it, probably the biggest uh, elections that are coming up in years. I mean, you see what's going on in the news with these bombs, which is, you know, totally ridiculous. I mean, some people are just absolutely crazy. You know, you just got to be careful. Um, there's just some real crazy people out there. But let me tell you, it's getting it, it's getting nasty, getting closer and closer to this election. So a lot of people don't want to probably want, want to hold anything going into it, like I told you. So I'm in cash. 
you know, I'm going to sit back and wait, and uh, we'll see where the market goes. So, so far, doing pretty good when it came out to that, when I told you that back in September. So let's get ready for that. All right, guys, listen, good luck, happy trading, and uh, let's all work together like a team. Let's try to make money, and like, and don't forget, classes do start at 1030. If you're not a, a gold or a platinum or diamond student, and you want to find out, or silver, if you want to find out uh, how to get into those classes, talk to Education Advisor, and they'll get you there. Oh, and one last thing I forgot to mention. I am going to be doing an event on um, Ninja Trader today at 430. So if anybody wants to join, uh, we'll send you a link, and you'd be happy to come and join us. All right? Come out and support us. Good luck, everyone. Happy trading. Like Ted said, look, listen, and learn. And how Grant says, you will learn. <laughs> All right? Good luck, everyone. Happy trading.